This is a video that I've been asked to do quite a few times in my AMA community, and that is a video on chat GBT and how you can use it effectively and authentically in your business. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what is chat GBT. So if you've heard it, but you think, I don't really understand what it is, then that bit is for you. I'm then going to go through five ways. I'm going to show you the system and show you five different ways that you can use it in your business to enhance your creativity and save you time. And then after that, I'm going to share with you some do's and don'ts. So some ways that you, you want to use it in order to get the best out of it for your business, where it works, where it doesn't work, those sorts of things. So let's get into it. So chat GPT is an AI bot. It is a artificial intelligence chat bot. So what it does is it uses natural language patterns and deep learning algorithms to be able to interact with you and deliver information to you from a, a huge wealth of places. So it's, it's like asking so instead of going into google and typing a question into google you can type something in chat chat gbt and it will come back with information that is specifically relevant to the question that you have asked it also learns things like style and, and the way in which you talk so the more that you use it it learns the kind of response or the kind of personality that you have and then it learns to give you better responses aligned with your communication style and your your vibe your voice all those sorts of things it's very very clever stuff so how are we going to use it within our business these are five ways that i've been playing around with chat gbt for a little while now and these are five ways that you can use it in your business to to either make things really easy or cut down on the time that it takes you to do something so i'm going to share my screen the first question, I think as well, this will give you an idea of the sorts of questions that you can ask it. So the first question that I asked it is around keywords. It's really good at giving you a whole selection of keywords and doing some at the beginnings of your keyword research. So give me 50 keywords for my business, which supports therapists to use technology effectively to build and grow their private practice. So you can put in, give me you know 100 keywords for my business which is a therapy business helping people with anxiety stress um, and weight loss and it will give you a huge selection of keywords as you can see here um there's all sorts of options the one thing i wouldn't say is it doesn't give you any depth of information about these keywords so you don't know how often people search them or or whether they are particularly high competition. So it kind of, there's a lot of competition in that market for that particular keyword. So it doesn't give you that kind of breadth of information that you need when you're doing keyword research. I have done a video on keyword research, you go check that out. Um, but it does maybe give you some ideas that you hadn't thought of before of things that you can think, oh, actually that those keywords, I hadn't even thought that people might be interested in, in those kind of slants for what I do. So it might come up with words that you've not used before or approaches to things that you haven't thought of before. And then you can go off and do deeper keyword research around these to say, are they the ones that I want to use in terms of, of, um, the competition for that particular keyword and, and how often people type in that particular keyword. So yeah, you can, it, it gives you some really good starting points, I think, in terms of keyword research. The next one in terms of tips is for your blogs, inspiration for your blogs. So I asked it to suggest 10 blog titles for a blog about sleep. Um, and this is what it came back with. So there's there's quite a few interesting ones there. What I would say about this, just to kind of caveat this, is it's not an SEO expert. So none of these are particularly fantastic from an SEO point of view. But 
On the other hand, um, there's some really interesting ones here. And instead of sitting here with my blog about sleep and thinking, oh gosh, I've got to come up with an interesting title, this certainly gives me some really good ideas and some really good thoughts about it that maybe I hadn't had before and can cut down on that process of thinking of really good um, uh, blog titles. So if I told, cho chose this one, the next thing that ChatGPT does is it learns from the previous question. So I've already asked it for blog titles. So if I typed in, um, give me a meta description for the blog, pasted that in. And there you go. So now I can have a look at this meta description and pick out what I like or what I don't like about it. So for me, this meta description is quite long, um, but I could certainly pick out some of these things. The other thing that ChatGPT doesn't do is it doesn't, doesn't particularly know your words and your personality. So you might take this sentence, for example, and think, I like what it's saying, but it's not really said in my voice. I would say it slightly differently. I'd say it like this. So it's not about copy and pasting from what ChatGPT gives you. It's about using it as a system to inspire you and kind of get the process started and then you can tweak it and change it or include a bit that you think actually it hasn't included this bit so I'm going to add that in perhaps you don't you don't particularly cover um, some of the topics that it suggests in there but you could change those to topics that you do cover things like that so I think it's great for getting you started with these things rather than starting from a blank piece of paper and not being sure what you're doing the other thing as you can see in the toolbar at the side is it saves your your questions so then you can go back to these whenever you want and, and have a look at some more so the second one is blogs if you're wanting to write some blogs then it's really great for getting some inspiration on blog titles and, and meta descriptions and keywords <laughs> so um the next one is um faqs so I want to know in this one, what are the common FAQs about anxiety? So this would be really good as a video content that you could do. You could pick your particular topic, whatever it is that you work on and ask ChatGPT, what are the frequently asked questions on that particular topic? And it will come back. I mean, this one's come back with 25 different options. So you can then pick some of these and turn them, say, into a PDF, or you could do a video answering these particular questions. You could do a series of videos answering these particular questions, because you know that these are the sorts of things that people ask when it comes to your particular topic. Again, there's something here that, that are really interesting, like can lifestyle changes such as diet and exercise impact anxiety? You might perhaps never even have thought of doing a particular blog post or a particular video or a PDF or something that kind of answers that question. So it can really help you to look at what are the frequently asked questions in your particular area, and then you can start creating some fantastic content on those particular questions. The next one that you can use ChatGBT for is if you are launching something. So I recently launched my blogging course and I didn't think of doing this at the time. Um, so I thought it'd be really good to kind of do it now and see, um, see what it comes back with. So what I asked it was, write me five inspiring, engaging social media posts promoting my new online course, Getting Started With Blogging. Now, one little element of ChatGBT, which I would, just just highlight to you here is i didn't put write me five social media posts because you're going to get something really quite broad and quite random i put write me five inspiring and engaging social media posts so you need to tell in your questions you need to tell chat gbt what kind of of vibe you want to have and then it will use that information and give you more relevant output so have a look at some of these. Um, it's even given me the hashtags, <laughs> which is is really good. It's amazing what what it can do 
Um, and again, I wouldn't necessarily copy and paste these word for word. Some of it isn't in my voice. Some of it isn't really kind of hitting on the points that I want to get across in terms of promoting the blogging course. Um, but there's loads of this that is really fantastic and stuff that I'd have spent absolutely ages sitting and thinking about. Um, I love that it's given me five different ones. I could potentially take little bits of each of the each of them and, and, and come up with some some ones that I can um I can put together. And it also gives you some advice. Remember to include eye-catching uh, visuals and to engage and complement your social media posts. So it even kind of gives you advice on the the anxiety one. It said at the bottom that if you're suffering from anxiety, then you know, please do get some help. So it doesn't just give you the information, it also gives you some context and some assistance as well which i think is really incredible so yeah so if you are launching something you're launching a new course you're launching a new anything then it might be worth using chat gpt to kind of give you some inspiration about how you can talk about that on your social media and the last one is um emails that you need to send it's chat gpt is a really good one to suggest how you'd write an email so i chose a uh, suggest an email for an unpaid and overdue invoice and this one i've put use a soft and understanding approach because again you want to give chat gpt a bit of context around what you want because it could return lots of different options in terms of your email and this is helping it understand a little bit more about the kind of tone and the kind of approach that i want now in my opinion so it gives you the subject line which is really good so you don't have to think about that and then here's the email that it's come back. Yeah, in my opinion, this is a bit long, but I'd probably take some bits of this. So, um, and again, some of it isn't in my language, um, but some of it is. Some of it is a little bit cheesy. Like I wanted to bring this matter to your attention in a respectful and understanding manner. I'm not sure I'd go that far, but it gives you a really good starting point. So what emails do you use in your, in your business and how could ChatGBT help you to formulate those emails rather than you sitting there thinking, oh God, I don't know what to write and I don't know how to put this. Then this could give you a good starting point and a really good way of picking some of these out that you want, some of these bits um to make your email sound good you could do obviously these sorts of emails for your business also you could do follow-on emails you could ask it to write um you know some follow-on emails to your course or to your video series or whatever it is that you are creating so again i think it's fantastic for getting that creativity started rather than you starting with a blank page so what is it in terms of the do's and don'ts? I think I've also I've kind of covered some of the main points in this. Number one is ChatGPT isn't a person. It's not a human being. It's an information tool. So quite a lot of the things that it comes back with, you're going to have to edit. You're going to have to look and say, actually, I like that, that sort of wording, but I don't. it doesn't sound like me. So I need to edit it. It has no concept of of the kind of culture <laughs> and stuff uh, around what you're doing. So it's just purely an information thing. A, a really good one though. So the, the, the kind of downside is it, of it is, you're probably going to take what it says and then edit it in order to match what you want and fit you a little bit better. The second downside to it is context. So as you can see with the keywords, it doesn't give you any sense of whether those are high converting keywords, how often those keywords are, uh, are used, those sorts of things. So it doesn't really give you the context of, of the thing. It just literally gives you the answer. So you're probably going to have to then go off and do a little bit of research yourself to know which ones are good ones to use or put some depth behind whatever it is that you you want so those blog titles were fantastic but would i use them in my business are they right for me will they help me in the way that i want them to help it doesn't know so you're gonna have to do that that kind of knowledge um 
as well, I think that that people are really worried about AI kind of taking over things like the jobs of copywriters and the jobs of creative, um, you know, marketing people, those kinds of things. And I think we're getting into how can we use chat GBT in a really useful and helpful way rather than it, it's not human. It doesn't have the breadth and the knowledge of human. It doesn't have the emotional connection as human. So whilst on one hand, I think the best use for chat GBT is to get, get those creative juices going to give you something to start with. I think that's at the minute, that's what I love about chat GPT is instead of me sitting here with a blank piece of paper thinking, oh, don't really know where to start. I could ask it a question and get some information that gives me a starting point and helps me to 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 start from my creative flow from something useful. So I hope that's given you an introduction to chat GPT and how it can help you in your therapy coaching health professional business and how can you can use it authentically not just use it to replace the the need for the the human element but to enhance your creativity and give you a starting point so if you've liked that video and found it useful please do hit the like button and comment down below what have you used chat gbt for what do you really enjoy i've only covered five things um i'm sure there's more so if you've been using it and really enjoying it for a particular reason in your business then do comment down below and let me know equally if you've got questions about what i've covered then you know more than happy for you to comment down below and please do consider subscribing to the channel because that helps these videos get out to more people and that's what i'm all about is about our industry we have so much knowledge and so much we can make such a difference in the world such a positive difference in the world and i want to help more people to understand demystify the technology so they can get out there and help more people so the more people subscribe to the channel the better the channel channel grows and the more people we reach so if you would consider doing that i would very much appreciate it so that is it for this week's video i hope you've enjoyed that one and i will see you next week for the next video